Hey programmers, welcome back. Today we're gonna talk about something very important and interesting at the same time. We're gonna talk about something you also usually wouldn't find in beginner tutorials, namely graceful shutdowns. So what is a graceful shutdown? Let's imagine we have a node server running in the cloud and we have a client and we can establish a WebSocket connection with this client to exchange real-time messages. Or we can also make a database transaction and update multiple tables at the same time. Now, what can happen to our node service is it can be forced by maybe the machine, the hardware to shut down, or maybe we're using Kubernetes, so K8, and we can have an automatic downscale. Maybe this service is no longer needed and it's shutting down, or maybe it's being shut, restarted. So there can be many reasons. And what's gonna happen is if you turn off this service or shut it down in the middle of having a database transaction, you might end up with bad things. For example, the database might have inconsistencies because one of the tables is gonna be updated and another one is not going to. Some databases can roll back the transactions if they notice that, but some may not. And your client might end up with a hanging a WebSocket connection and it's gonna be interrupted with the no error. Or if you're doing async messaging and have some kind of a queue, maybe RabbitMQ on your server is going to not dispose all the resources that you need. So what I'm trying to say is that you have to try to close all these connections before turning your machine off. But how do we do that if we're forced to turn off our node service? Well, this is what's called graceful shutdown, meaning you perform the cleanup before shutting down your service. And let's take a look at how we would achieve that. So whenever a service is receiving a message from the machine that, hey, you're being interrupted or you need to shut down, usually we're gonna get one of these three messages. So the first one is SIG. In. SIG in stands for signal interruption. This one is usually gonna come up when you as a developer stop the service manually, for example. Let me start this. I'm gonna to go to a terminal and say node index.js. And you're gonna see that the server is listening on port 3000. And I am already listening for this process called sig int. And as soon as I do control C, we're gonna see that sig int received. So it's basically able to listen for this event and close down the server. The way we do that is we do server.close and then we can do all the cleanup that we want. And we're gonna talk about this in a minute. Okay. Now, the next sig signal would be sig term, signal for termination. And this one would usually come from the process that this service is running on. Or for example, if you're using Docker, that's gonna come from Docker, okay, or Kubernetes. And sig kill is the signal that's gonna come when there's no grace period anymore, meaning we're running out of time and we simply need to kill the service. And this is where these issues may come up. So you normally don't want to wait until you're forced to shut down. You normally want to be able to shut down gracefully in either here or here because these are not forceful. Now let's talk about the code here. Okay. So in the code, what you would usually have, you, you would listen for these events. And before you close the server, meaning shut down your express server, what you would have is some things like this. Now I copied the code here and here, and this is basically the same operation that you would normally perform. Doesn't matter if it's being terminated by hand like I just did, or if the system is forcing you to, to terminate or asking you rather not forcing. And what we would do is for example, close database connection. For example, we would say connection.end if we're connected to the database using this connection and then say MySQL connection closed or we could also close the WebSocket connection like this. We have a reference to the WebSocket object and we would say dot close. Okay, as simple as that. If you have a RabbitMQ connection, you can also close the RabbitMQ connection. For example, if you're writing to a file, you can stop the file writing and you get the idea. You can always gracefully stop the action. And for example, if you're having child processes, and I already have a video on child processes, you can stop them gracefully as well. Okay, just like this, child.kill, and you're gonna pass sig end, for example. Now, going back to our board, we're gonna see that we are having this node servers 
just running by itself. But usually this is not the case. Let's say, let's be honest and acknowledge that. Let me change the color of this guy. I'm gonna make this blue. And we're gonna say that we're running within a Docker container, okay? So this is a Docker container and our node service is running inside it. Now, how is our graceful shutdown is going to look now? Okay, so the Docker is actually going to send this SIG term. So signal terminate to our node app before we stop the Docker container. Okay, just to indicate that, hey, you need to shut down the servers. And when this happens, if you don't manage to shut down your service gracefully, like by doing all your cleanup here, or maybe you have even additional cleanups here, after 15 seconds, because that's what the Docker's documentation says here, or actually 10 seconds and 30 seconds for Windows containers, it's gonna shut down forcefully. You would normally want to fit into these 10, 10 seconds, but luckily you can increase the stop timeout, meaning it's not going to issue this SIG kill, but it's going to first issue this one. You can quit or shut down gracefully and only after the specified timeout, this SIG kill is going to fire and then forcefully shut down your service. Okay, now this is understood. Now let's talk about Kubernetes, okay? So if you don't use Kubernetes, if you only work with Docker, this is it, you don't need to watch any further. But if you're using Kubernetes and if you actually do some long running tasks in your API, which usually we do, for example, uploading file or maybe processing something in a backend, I think this article and my further explanation would help you a lot. So let's talk about Kubernetes and how graceful shutdowns would look here. So first of all, when you shut down the pod, what is happening in the background? So when a pod gets shut down, we remove the pod information from the IP tables, meaning the service, the ingress proxy is basically gonna forget that this pod IP ever existed. But we're also exiting the process at the same time. Now, the thing with Kubernetes is that these two things are gonna be happening in parallel. Now, what happens if our Kubernetes still knows that there's an IP of this pod, but the pod already exited and got deleted here? Because as soon as the process has exited, Kubernetes is gonna delete the pod. Because if this happens, the pod doesn't exist anymore, but the request may still come in. This is bad. So what we usually want to do is exit the process before the pod IPs are deleted from IP tables, okay? Now, how do we gracefully shut down the pods? This is a perfect article. I'm gonna leave it in the description so you can read it if you're using or intend to use Kubernetes in the future. So what you can do is you simply need to wait a bit, okay? As soon as you get this sick term signal, maybe just wait a bit longer before you exit. This sick term is if you do everything fast and then close the service, maybe Kubernetes hasn't deleted the IP from its IP tables yet and all of the, basically all the requests are gonna return 500. This is not what we want, okay? And by the way, one extra thing, process exit means that we're exiting gracefully and process exit one means there are some errors, okay? So process exit zero is what you want. Now, after we waited a bit, our IP tables have been deleted we can still process the traffic that's still hanging within our app. And finally, we can close the long living connections such as web, web sockets and then terminate the process, okay? By default, Kubernetes will send the sick term signal and wait 30 seconds before the four skill processes. The first 15 seconds, this is why we need to wait for 15 seconds. We're gonna operate as if nothing happened and simply let Kubernetes delete the endpoint kube proxy, ingress controller, and so on basically by endpoint I mentioned a IP before. But you can also use this hook. So this hook is called, it's a basically a lifecycle hook called pre-stop. So Kubernetes pod is gonna know that, hey, it's being shut down. It's gonna remove all the IPs from the IP tables, but it's only going to invoke this sick term. So your app, node application is only gonna get the sick term after 15 seconds. And then it has 15 seconds to gracefully shut down. This is enough time, unless, this is enough time unless you have some long running task. And let's take a look at it. What if graceful shutdown applies to pods being deleted, but what if you don't delete the pods, okay? Nobody told Kubernetes to delete the pods. The thing is, 
Even if you don't, Kubernetes still will delete the pods all the time. For example, if you supplied a new deployment file, it's gonna tear down everything and start again, maybe like with a rolling start. So it's gonna stop things incrementally and start again. Or maybe you update the image name or image um, version, it's gonna do the same. It's gonna stop all the pods and then start them again. And what do you need to do? So this is basically gonna be the timeline of stopping 20 pods and starting them again. What you're gonna do with long running connections in this case, okay? Let's say you have WebSockets and you have some long running tasks. For example, you upload a video to YouTube. You want to let the video processing to finish and not to suddenly stop the video processing because your service is done. Now you can actually extend the graceful shutdown or the time, the shutdown time until up until three hours or even more, it doesn't matter how much, as long as you want, for example, with really long running tasks. And then the thing is, Kubernetes is already gonna remove the IP. So their new requests are not gonna come in, but this old one is still gonna be there and be processed. Now there are of course some drawbacks, for example, you're not gonna be able to get any metrics so if you have an APM, it's not gonna collect any data. Debugging is difficult and the liveness probe is not gonna work because there's no IP anymore, okay? And also if you're using WebSockets, simply don't turn off your service, okay? Set the shutdown time to a lot of maybe three hours or one hour and let the client to stop initiate stopping the uh, WebSocket, okay? This is one of the best practices. Now, the better thing, Instead of increasing the grace period, you should consider creating a new deployment, meaning you will create a new deployment alongside the old one, and the old one is still gonna be there processing the old request, and the new one is already going to be running side by side. This is how you can deal with really long running tasks. And this technique is actually called rainbow deployments. And it's useful when you want to keep the previous pods running for longer than the grace period. That's it, guys. I hope you liked the video and learned something new today. If you did, check out my other videos on the channel. I'm pretty sure you're gonna like them too. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Goodbye.